Hello everyone from Motion VFX. On the previous episode, we've looked at the basic editing features and we had a complete overview of the viewers. In this episode, we will have an overview of the timelines options and how to refine the edit. To start, let's add some music to our project. I will select my music folder and I will double click on the music to load it in the source viewer on the left. When you load an audio file, the source viewer switch to the audio mode. So you will be able to see on the top the complete audio file waveform, which is very useful when you have to navigate quickly inside the audio file. And below we can see a zoom version, which is very useful to be more accurate and place the player at the right position to add an in and out point. You can decide the level of zoom, you just have to click on the right value, By using JKL, you can be very accurate. I've got my selection, so I can drag and drop my audio over the record viewer on the right and use the overlay menu to select which edit operation I want to do. I will select overwrite and my audio will be automatically sent to the audio track one. Let's add a second audio file by adding some city background noise. I will open the sound library panel. I will type in the search field traffic. I can preview the audio track. I will drag and drop the audio track on the source viewer to load it. I will add an in and out point. And I would like to add the sound starting at the play at position. If I select insert, it will insert the audio inside the music track and push my edit. So I don't want that. I will undo it. Let's have a try with the overwrite. Same problem, it will replace the music by my background noise. In fact, we can see that DaVinci Resolve will always edit the audio file on the track 1. And we want that the background audio goes to the track A2 in order to keep our music. So we need to tell DaVinci Resolve where to edit our audio file. On the left of the timeline, we can see that we have the red square on A1. This red square is telling DaVinci Resolve where to send the audio. So if I click on A2, we'll see that the red square moved to A2 and A2 is renamed A1. So we are telling DaVinci Resolve that the target is now the audio track 2. We can do the overwrite edit a second time and now the background audio will be sent on the right track. If I click back on A1, A2 is back. In a future episode, we will see in details how to mix the audio tracks directly inside the timeline. But here, let's have a deeper look at the timeline interface. First, there are many options to display the timeline. Most of the options are available by clicking on the timeline button on the left. The first option available is the tab options. This option allows you to open multiple timelines at the same time. I will open the media pool and ask DaVinci Resolve to duplicate my current timeline. So I will do a right click and select duplicate timeline. I can double click on it and we can see that the second tab will appear. So on the copy I can do some changes and get two various edits and compare both quickly. You can also open two timelines and copy-paste with few clips some elements like titles animations from one to another timeline. As we have two versions of my edit, I would like to show you a cool feature when you want to compare two timelines and see the differences. First, I will double-click on my timeline 1 inside the media pool to open it. Then I will do a right-click on the timeline I want to compare, here the copy, and select Compare with the current timeline. It will open a new window inside we can see the two edits. I will zoom out a little bit to display the complete edit. And now we can visually see the differences between the two edits. We can see which clip is shorter or longer and see the clips that we've moved. On the right, you can ask to sync the two playheads and by moving the two playhead, we can visualize the differences. On the left, you can display the differences index, so you can have a time code list of all the changes between the two timelines. Very useful with long project. Okay, I will close this window and come back to the timelines options. The second option is to display the subtitle track. We'll see it in a future lesson. The third option can switch off the waveforms. It can be very useful if you don't need to work on the audio part, as DaVinci Resolve won't have to generate waveforms, so you can get better and smoother performances on your system. Below you will find the video options. First, I will zoom in. 
By default, for each video clip, DaVinci Resolve will display multiple thumbnails. If you zoom inside, it will generate more thumbnails. You can ask DaVinci Resolve to display only the first and last frame of each clip. Or like the waveform, you can ask to remove all the thumbnails and get only blue clip. Again, on some computers it can give you a smoother experience as DaVinci Resolve won't have to take resources to display all these informations. You can modify the video and audio tracks height with these two sliders, but you can also modify individually each track directly inside the timeline. I will display the waveform and see which option we have with the audio view options. The first option is non-rectified waveform. This option lets you toggle between the waveform being drawn from the bottom of the audio track up, or center or mirrored about itself. With the second option, full waveform, the waveform will occupy the full space of each audio bar in the timeline. Or you can disable it to separate the waveform from the title of the audio clip. The title will be more readable. The last option is a waveform border, which draw a darker border around the waveform, and it will add a better contrast. Concerning the navigation inside the timeline, zooming in and out are very important. By pressing Command and Plus, we'll zoom inside the timeline based on the position of the playhead. And by pressing Command and Minus at the same time, we'll zoom out. By pressing Shift plus Z, it will automatically show all your edits. But what is really nice, if you press a second time Shift plus Z, it will come back on the previous zoom level. So you can press Shift plus Z, then move the playhead to another part of your edit, then press again Shift plus Z, and zoom inside this new part at the same level of zoom. There are some dedicated zoom icons on the timeline tools bar. The first one, the full extent zoom, we can compare it to a dynamic Shift plus Z, meaning it will display all your edits, but if you change the global length of your edit, DaVinci Resolve will automatically fit the timeline inside. The second icon, Zoom Detail, will zoom inside the edit at the frame level, useful when you want to be very accurate. The third icon, Custom Zoom, will zoom to a specific value. The value can be set with a slider on the right. On the previous episode, we've created the timeline by adding clips on the empty timeline. If you want to create a new one, just press Command plus N. A pop-up window will appear with a timeline option like the name, number of the video and audio tracks, audio tracks type like mono, stereo, 5.1 and more. I like to have at least two or three video tracks and two audio tracks by default. But here, DaVinci Resolve is set to one and one. It could be very painful to change it every time and a big waste of time. But it is possible to modify the default values by your own values. You will have to go to the DaVinci Resolve Preferences, click on the User tab and the Editing section. Inside, you will find the new timeline settings where you can set the start time code value, the number of the video and audio tracks, and the audio type. So I will set the number of the video tracks to 3 and the audio tracks to 2 and click on the Save button. If I press Command plus N again, this time DaVinci Resolve will have the right values. Now we've seen the key features of the timeline, let's see how to refine our edit. First, we have the Select tool activated. You can adjust the in and out point of the various clip. You can move your clip everywhere, but you can't change the content inside your clip. To do so, you will have to switch the Trim Edit mode or use the shortcut T. With the Trim Edit mode selected, you will be able to slip the content of your clip inside your edit without modifying the duration of the clip and the cuts. With a white rectangle, we can see the range of the content available on the left and on the right. When we are moving, we can see that the record viewer switched to four windows, but it is a little bit too small. Let's remove the media pool, but also, as we don't need the source viewer anymore, I will switch to the one viewer mode. So the top left shot is the first frame of the clip, the top right will be the last frame of the clip, and below, on the left, it is the last frame of the previous clip, and on the right, the first frame of the next clip. So, with these four frames view, we can check at once if the cuts are good. If you move your cursor below the dark blue line, the behavior of the cursor will change. This time, you will slip the clip inside the edit. On the four windows, we can see that this time, the in and out frame of the clip are the same, but the last frame of the previous clip and the first frame of the next clip are updating. 
We've seen before when the select mode is activated that we can adjust the in and out point of the clip without affecting the length of the global edit, but it can create some gaps. If you switch to the trim edit mode, the behavior will also change as it will affect the global duration of the edit. For an editor, the pace of the editing is also very important. So being able to cut during the action is really important. DaVinci Resolve provides a dynamic way to edit with the playback. This is a dynamic trim mode that you can activate with a shortcut W. When it is activated, the playhead becomes yellow. You can combine the dynamic trim mode with the selection mode or the trim edit mode. If the selection mode is enabled, you can use the shortcut JKL to adjust the cut and see in real time the edit. If I select the last frame of the clip, we can get the same result as before, but this time with real time playback. If I select the clip, I can also move the clip and create a gap depending on the edit operation. If I switch to the trim edit mode and perform some changes, this time it will affect the duration of the global video track. If I select the clip and move it manually once under the dark blue line, it will slip the clip inside the edit without creating gaps using JKL. If I move the clip manually over the dark blue line, then using JKL, it will slip the content of the clip in real time. To check and preview the cut, you just have to press the space bar. It will play around the cut automatically and stop. In this lesson, we've learned more about the timelines options and how to refine your edit. In the next tutorial, we'll see how to modify the speed of your video and create some nice effects. See you there. Ciao, ciao. Bye bye.